All right, everybody, thank you for sticking around for new release rundown after table takes from this morning. We are joined this week by Mox Boarding House. Mark uh, has come out to join us. Yeah, uh, thank fun. you very much for coming out. This is your first time on the show. Yeah, no, I'm excited. It's a lot of fun. Anything that you want to say about yourself, about Mox Boarding House sure. before we get going? Sure, yeah. Um, so first off, Mox Boarding House is a, a great uh, game store. Uh, well, it's a more than a game store because we have a restaurant. We also are attached to Card Kingdom, uh, which does a lot of online sales for uh, magic cards. So if you're looking for certain magic cards uh, and your local store doesn't have them in their binder, we got you. Um, so yeah, we do a lot, all sorts of things. Like I said, we have the restaurant as well, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a full package. Where you have a big uh, board game library. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can you can borrow. I think we have like 700 to 800 different games that you can borrow. So we should have something for you. If not, I'm impressed. Because um, yeah, we, we pretty much have everything. Okay, so uh, you have a location in Ballard, yep. one in Bellevue, mm -hmm. and very soon. Very very soon, uh, we will have one in Portland, uh, and then hopefully <coughs> going forward, we'll we'll see where we go from there. Great. So, uh, we have a selection of some of the new releases that came out this week. Yep. Uh, you have uh, diligently researched all of them and will yes. give us an incredibly expert spiel for each one. Yes. Great. <laughs> uh, you wanted to start with Alone Against the Frost. Yes. Seeing as how it was Friday the 13th, it seemed like a, a good idea to start with something a little spooky. Um, so, we have Alone in the Frost. So, this is going to be a one-shot that you can play for Call of Cthulhu. Um, so if you are familiar with 7th edition Call of Cthulhu, this is going to be totally compatible with that. Um, it is a game that you can play by yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can, you can run it alone. Uh, if you want a real fun, spooky time, you can just light a bunch of candles, wait for like a, a dark winter night, and just kind of play this, where you uh, take on the role of an uh, anthropologist uh, that goes on an expedition in the uh, Canadian wilderness to try and find some discoveries. I predict that the Wendigo will show up. That tends to be how this goes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably a strong, uh, strong theory. So, uh, did, did, were you able to figure out how this um, solitaire adventure works? Because so like a lot of people, um, there's, I know a lot of people who yeah. would immediately say, well, if you're playing it by yourself, it's not a role-playing game. Yeah, well, see, you're still going to have dice, you're still going to have your characters, all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so all of the, the classic RPG things are in there, um, but it's kind of rolled into a big package with kind of like uh, those old Goosebumps Choose Your Own Adventures. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's a little bit of both of that. Wait, um, hold on. Were the first Choose Your Own Adventures well, that you no. encountered Goosebumps? <laughs> Well, yeah, maybe a little bit. But wow, but, okay. I mean, all right, fine. I mean, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. I'm old, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of both of those kind of rolled in together. So. Kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Arabian Nights, Tales from the Arabian Nights, sure, yeah. or the Sherlock Holmes game, yep. um, where, it, you know, there's... There's a short paragraph, there's a number, and then it's like, then do this, go somewhere else if thing happened. Yep. Um, so it is very much a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Call of Cthulhu structure, I guess. Yes. So, so like I said, uh, it is going to be part of uh, that universe. Also, all the rules and stuff from the RPG, you're going to mm -hmm. apply to this. Um, so it's kind of an expansion onto that. You can't, this isn't a standalone thing, so you are going to have to have uh, either like the, the starter kit or the, uh, the main rule book uh, to check that out. Well, not only that, but it looks like this is not something that you, this is not like a one to four player adventure. No. This is a solo adventure. Yep. You could probably adapt it. If you read everything, yeah, there, um, there is some companion characters that you're going to have. So you're, it's not just one person going out on there. There's the, the expedition. You're going to have the the doctor, who's kind of the main character. He's going to have a couple grad students and then a guide. Mm -hmm. So there's there's effectively uh, you know like five people who are going on this this adventure. So so this seems like you know if you have wanted to get in Call of Cthulhu, mm -hmm. but you haven't found a group for it, or if you want to start running it and you kind of want to do a solo run bef to get your bearings before sure, you yeah. run it for a group, this might be really good. This, yeah, this would be a really good start. Uh, this would be a great way to kind of figure out how you can structure adventures and things like that if you want to come up with your own. Uh, yeah, it's a great format to kind of steal from as far great. as that's concerned. And it looks like it's $20, so it's not the worst kind of intro package. Yeah, no, it could be worse. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's a pretty nice low price point, so you can kind of jump into it. Again, if you already have your Call of Cthulhu manuals, all mm -hmm. you need to do is get that, and you can, you're off and running. Great. Um, do you know if any other RPGs have done solo? I don't think anything's been this prominent. No, solo. no. These these guys are doing. I think they're kind of on the forefront of that. Okay, because um, I I know there's uh there's Iron Sworn, mm -hmm. which is a new uh, RPG that is just solo. Yeah. Um, which is is very also very intriguing. But I don't think any of kind of like the major names in the hobby. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, yeah, there's no like D and D or anything like that that I'm aware of. I mean, well, who well knows? no, but there's wasn't um. 
Didn't one of D&D's, D&D's second intro starter box, mm. I think, like Ice Storm Peak or something like that, yeah. I think that that was either a solo adventure or it was a one-on-one -on -one with like one, I think it was one mm. player, one GM. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but this, this is standalone, so you can do this by yourself, you don't even need a GM, uh, which is kind of fun. So if, if you can't meet up with your play group and you still want to play Call of Cthulhu, you do have options. Great. Well, uh, let's see what won the poll mm -hmm. to cover next is Guerrilla Marketing. Ooh, that's a fun one. Uh, so Guerrilla Marketing is kind of a three to eight player party game. And, uh, and then, to be clear, this is not an expansion. No. Despite the box shape. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not your normal normal game shape, um, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, it comes with a bunch of little dry erase notebooks, mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to pass those around, uh, trying to come up with uh, interesting and funny names for different things. So at the beginning of the game, you'll kind of set up like what category, if you want to do like movie titles or a company name or mm -hmm. like a college course, and you'll go through in the first round and you'll name that thing. Okay. Um, so each person will have a little booklet, and they'll pass it to the person on their left, that person will write a name, and go on and go, okay. so on and so forth. How you kind of determine how your name goes is you'll roll dice and it'll come up with an acronym and you'll have to match that acronym. Okay. So, so you'll kind of go through, once you, you finish that, you'll do a judging phase where you'll see out of this category who, whose was the funniest or whose was the best. And then you'll move on to a next phase where you come up with the tagline. Uh, basically the same thing, you'll go through, pass the, the little notebooks around, everyone will write little taglines. And then you'll go through and see who has the best tagline. So the round one is not, or to be clear, mm -hmm. so round one we have an acronym, yep. we come up with what for that acronym stands for, yep. and then we, we judge and pick the best of that. Yes. And then the second round where we come up with taglines, yes. are all those taglines for Based what one? Based off of the, yeah, okay. the, the, the one that won the first round, okay. that's what you're going to come up with the tagline for. Um, this is a great game because you can play it with like kids, it's pretty family friendly. Um, but it also seems like it'd be a lot of fun for like adults. So if sure. you're like having a little little soiree or a little get together and you want to have some fun, because we are in Seattle, we are very fancy. Yes, we have soirees. Yes, we have game salons. Uh, yes, only the finest here. Uh, <laughs> so so yeah, uh, this this is great for kind of both situations. Sure, because uh, I can definitely see it being a lot of fun uh, with a lot of. Well, like, this friends. strikes me as illustrations for people who. Uh, think they draw so bad that they can't share yes. and have not realized that that is part of the fun of telestrations. Yes, uh, yeah, so you don't have to worry about showing off your art skills in this. Um, you just have to be able to come up with funny or clever names for, for different things. So no pressure, but pressure. Yeah, just a little bit, just okay. a different kind of pressure. So, so okay. if, you're, if you're more into vocabulary, less into art, this is, this is a really good alternative okay. to telestrations. So uh, again, um, Telestrations kind of folks, people who like telestrations, mm -hmm. should probably check this out. Yes. Party games in general. Yep. Um, any other, uh, I think it's pretty solidly just a party game thing? For the most yeah. part, like okay. I said, you can do three to eight players. Um, so you can play it in small groups, or if you want to have a bunch of people, you can do that as well. Um, it kind of fits a lot of different scenarios. So okay. It's a pretty versatile um, little game. And as a party game, there's probably not really a spite meter for this. Not really. Um, like you're judging every everybody's judging everybody else's stuff. So each person will have a booklet that'll have like a different little subcategory on it, and you're you're not having to compare yourself against somebody else. You're just judging what everyone's inputted for you. Just once, I want some sort of party game that includes a traitor mechanic or something <laughs> like that. Some sort of betrayal that I can that, get that would be a lot of fun. All right, uh, what would you like to do next? And then I believe we will put up another sure. uh, poll. Um, let's do uh, Funko Verse. That's, always, Funko? that's Funko always fun. All right. So tell us about Funko Verse for sure. the, the what handful of people who have not heard about it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been the the new hot hot game on the on the market. Do you uh, do you like IPs? Do you like Funkos? Do you like games? Then, then well, guess what? This is what? It. This, is, this, this is how is you everything. get all those things. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so Funko Verse for those who haven't played it, um, it's kind of it's basically like a miniatures game uh, in like the simplest fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, it just breaks everything down to very 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 simple uh, mechanics. Uh, it's the cooldown like, mechanic in particular is very interesting. That's a lot of fun, yeah. Uh, so you'll have like a little cooldown tracker where you can kind of track like what powers you've used and then they'll kind of be replenished after a little while mm -hmm. um, along with characters. Um, this obviously is themed in the Jurassic Park universe, mm -hmm. so you get a so lot of So this is not like a new addition to the game. Yep. This is just a new quote unquote base set of four, because they've been selling these in, um, what, a base set of four, yep. and, then, and then like, like expansion packs, two of, packs of two? Yeah. Um, Except for, isn't, isn't um, the Kool-Aid Man, isn't he like a one-figure team, I think? I think so. I think he is. Not, yeah, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the Kool-Aid Man expansion in, uh, yeah. What, what is? I got Sika as well. 
Uh, Agretzko. Ah, Agret there we okay. go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, uh, so that one's good. Uh, this one's great because, of course, you get uh, you know Dr. Alan Grant, you get the Dr. Ellie Sadler, uh, Ray Arnold, and a Raptor. Um, and with all the other Funko verse uh, games, you can of course mix and match your characters. We know um, who the the true heroes here are. Yes, the Raptors. Yes. Uh, in the other expansion they have, they're going to have Ian Malcolm as well, so you can get a little uh, Jeff Goldblum. Do you know if the Raptors have some sort of um, miniature mechanic of like attacking from the side or having one distract you or anything like that? I would like to think so. Okay. Um, these guys are really good about doing a lot of them thematic stuff. Yep. I haven't had a chance to check out this one particularly. I have uh, played all the other expansions like the Golden Girls, mm -hmm. you know, all the Batman, Harry Potter, all those ones. Um, I was so. very amused and gratified to see how everyone was like absolutely Golden Girls MVP, yes, hundred percent. Oh man, to the tournament. Rose is the best. Like so good, so good. Um, yeah, no, that's great. I'm, I can't wait to see if they can get the rest of the Golden Girls out there because yeah, I mean, B. Arthur is amazing. So it'd be it'd be great to have a little B. Arthur running around with with Rick. Uh, what, uh, what I love is when I first heard about Funkoverse, mm -hmm. um, like I heard they were making a, a game and it was going to be like a minute. Uh, they were making a board game or something. I think my first thought was like, man, wouldn't it be great if they did like some sort of brutal miniatures combat? <laughs> game but they'll never do that yeah. and then I got sat down to just play it and I was like ha ha and this they're like no that's what it is and I was like cool <laughs> Yeah, it's one of, yeah, one of those things where it's you wouldn't expect it. If somebody was to tell me like a year or two ago, like, hey, this is going to be like a miniatures game. I would be mm -hmm. like, yeah, right. But no, it's great. It's yeah. perfect, and it's and it's fantastic for for that because they have so many different IPs. They're gonna make, you're able to mix and match everything. Like I said, you can do Rick and Morty and uh, you know Jurassic Park and all, mm -hmm. all these other things. I know a lot of people were excited about Jurassic Park, so yes. that's yeah. why I grabbed it. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 a really cool one. We actually did a uh, event with Funko at Mox uh, recently. Oh cool. Uh, they, they came down and de demoed this and showed off a lot of their other new stuff as well. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Great. Yep. Uh, so, this is a miniatures game, mm -hmm. but, you know, I think this is, it's fully accessible and understandable and comfortable for board game players. Absolutely. I would say it's more of a board game than a miniatures game. Because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's grid based. Yep. Uh, it's kind of token based. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not a, painting your minis, nope. you're not assembling them, nope. you're not using a ruler to kind of measure your distance. Yep. So a lot of the traditional miniature stuff is not here, mm -hmm. but the it's not just a board game either. It's definitely like a, a grid combat game. Yes, it's it's kind of a nice bridge in between. So okay. if, you've, if you've been kind of curious about miniatures games, this is a really good way to kind of test the waters and be like, hey, like I do kind of like this as a format for games. I'm mm -hmm. going to jump into miniatures games now. And the it is a competitive game. It's not mm -hmm. co-op. No. Um, you, are, but you are duking it out. The at least with the miniatures I've seen so far, it's not what I would call high spite. Like there's not a lot of betrayal or tricking or kind of screwing the other player over. You're yeah. just you're playing a miniatures game, so mm -hmm. you're trying to beat up their people. Pretty much, yeah. And there's usually objectives on the board as well that you're trying to do. So mm -hmm. really, you're just trying to obtain victory points. Now you'll gain victory points for beating up your opponent, but that's not always the best winning strategy depending on which which scenario you're playing. So okay, so great. Yeah. Um, do you know any of the other uh, expansions that have come out recently? Um, oh gosh, I know they came out with like one or two other ones. Um, no, they've just been popping them out so okay. fast. I haven't had a chance to check out the the other ones aside from the Jurassic Park because I just love Jurassic Park. So great. <laughs> well, stuck on that. Uh, it looks like the next game is a tie between Oak and Iron and Alubari. Ooh. Which would you like to discuss? Mm, let's go with Oak and Iron because that looks really interesting. Okay. Now sneak this over here. Ciao. Boop. Uh, so, Open Iron is more of a miniatures game. Um, uh, it is a historical naval combat game uh, where you'll take control of small fleets of ships and you'll go around and blow up pirates and all sorts of goodies. Um, if you like something like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, uh, sorry, A Sea of Thieves, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, those kind of things, it's going to be set in that kind of universe and that kind of timeline, uh, and you'll be able to kind of do all that stuff. There's going to be a Blackbeard expansion coming out soon. Okay. So Because like on the shelf, there were a bunch of little small expansions mm -hmm. that looked like they were new ships or new missions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you, this is the, basically like your starter set. This is going to give you everything you need to start off with the game and get everything all up and rolling. Okay. Uh, after that, of course, you can get a bunch of different expansions like Blackbeard, and you can get like some traders and all the uh, merchant traders and all those kind of things. So you can kind of pick different factions and then just battle with your friends. Uh, if you go into some of the larger formats of the game, you can play with up to six people. So mm -hmm. you can just have a whole, whole big naval throwdown if you if you're into that. So this is a miniatures game. Yep. Um, it looks like the the miniatures are actually just 
No, they're straight up miniatures, yeah. yeah um, so this is a miniatures game, full on. Um, do you have to paint the minis, do you know? I don't believe so. Okay, yeah. so pre-painted miniatures game. Um, do you know how it plays? Because on the back it looks like it has measurement sticks that are very reminiscent of X-Wing. Yeah, so it looks, yeah, so there's, there's some, some measurement tools, there's some things like that. You'll have cards, range finders, things like that. They try and make it really simple and really approachable. So mm -hmm. you're not using a bunch of like measuring tapes or all that kind of stuff. They try and streamline things so it's not like clunky. Sure. Um, and you can kind of get into it, even if you're not super familiar with, with historical miniatures games. Because traditionally a lot of those historical miniatures games are really crunchy. It's super mm -hmm. math heavy. Very there's a lot of, Yeah, a lot of stuff to it. This tries to strip away a lot of the extra bits, tries to make it really uh, accessible and easy for people. Okay, so for people who kind of want to get into historical minis, mm -hmm. uh, or folks who really like X-Wing, but yep. also love like the old creaking wood ship master and commander kind of thing going yep. on, um, and who else would you recommend this for? Um, so I mean, yeah, that, that's mainly the big market there. Um, outside of that, I mean, People who just like yeah, like history. I mm -hmm. mean, people who are into historical buffs. There's a lot of good history games we have here because uh, Alibari is actually kind of themed in history. Sure. Um, so yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, if you just really like that era and you kind of want to explore having ships flying around your table, uh, that's that's a good good option. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and again, like a number of expansions have already come out for this. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And there's you said that Blackbeard is planned down the road. Yeah. Well, I just I was just looking up. He should be getting released soonish. So okay. we so we'll we'll be seeing him sooner rather than later. He's definitely already announced, and then we're going to have more pirates and other like other stuff like that as well. Great. <coughs> Well, why don't you put that Shoop. over there, and I think then uh, we can jump to Alubari, yeah, let's and do then it. we'll probably have our final uh, vote. And uh, I think we can open up the color monster if we want to dig into that yeah, one. Yeah, in we'll more take a detail. look at that one. That, that looks like a lot. I of fun. believe I have been given clearance. For sure, that. sure. If not, too bad. We'll do it anyway. <laughs> So Alubari, mm -hmm. you said this was also a, a historical one. Yeah, so this kind of takes place in colonial times. Uh, you're pretty much building a rail station, uh, not a rail station, you will, I mean, you will build rail stations, but you're building a rail line um, to uh, help you produce tea. Um, so you're going through, you're harvesting tea, you're like so specifically the Darjeeling tea? Yes, yeah, so, so it's, uh, you're creating that rail line. Uh, the game ends when you actually finish the rail line, mm -hmm. uh, and how you'll determine how you win is basically whoever contributed the most to it. So throughout the process, you're gonna create stations, you're gonna harvest tea, you're going to move your workers. It's very much like a worker placement kind of game. Mm -hmm. uh, also kind of a little bit of resource management, but not a ton of that. Um, so you'll do that, you'll kind of go through, you'll create, create your stations, you'll build rail lines, uh, and then you'll kind of compete to see who, who can get the most victory points by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, uh, there's also like weather is a big uh, part of the game, so mm -hmm. the weather will change throughout. Kind of so the, you're, you're building a rail line, mm -hmm. are you also trying to grow tea and trade tea? Yes. So, okay. you'll, you'll, so is, that, is that the resource management kind of side of things? Yeah, that's kind of like more of that half of it. Um, so you're, you are harvesting tea so you can kind of get victory points and those uh, will kind of help you do more things. You can mm -hmm. spend uh, what are called like chai tokens. Uh, to add more workers, so you'll get more workers, so you can get a little bit more done in certain rounds. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much kind of like a cooperative game where you are working together with everyone else to build this rail line, but mm -hmm. you want to kind of do it more than the person next to you. Okay. So, what games, because this, like so far, I think this is kind of the most traditional board mm -hmm. gaming game we've covered this week. Yes, yeah, this is this so far. What games would you compare this to? Um, let's see, there's a few different ones. Um, oh, gosh, I'm just drawing a blank right now. Uh, it's, it begins with it's Snow Something. I can't think of it, though. Uh, oh, well, if you're a big fan of Snow Something, yes. check this yes. out. <laughs> Sorry. Got it. No, uh, I'll, it'll come to me later. That's I'll, fine. I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely like worker placement kind of game. Uh, it's not super long. It's something you can play in about an hour, hour and a half. Is it um, is it like a very Euro low randomness game? I don't I don't see a whole lot of like dice or anything. No, like there's that not the really dice yet. It's definitely kind of in the Euro genre. Um, okay. It's not super super heavy, um, so it is a little bit more of like an introductory Euro game. The interesting thing that I do see too is that it's a one to five player game. Yes. So, do you know how the solo experience is? Yes. For this? So throughout the game, there's going to be like basically like a. a computer player mm -hmm. who if the players aren't when really you're playing like, one do you have a computer player when you're playing yes. more than one player yes so okay. if things kind of get derailed because um, it's a railroad game of course um, so if things if you're not being really productive mm -hmm. the game will kind of help you along okay um, and as you are creating your rail lines you're gonna have to clear debris off of certain areas to sure. unlock that area to move forward um, the game will just by itself start clearing tokens if you're not doing it so okay. if people are just doing weird random things and not being productive, 
the game will kind of like help you be like, all right, let's let's move it along. We got to move to the next section. Okay. Um, so you can use that, and you can kind of expand on that a little bit more to play kind of a single player game. Great. Uh, so you kind of recommended this to historical fans. A little bit, yeah. Um, this doesn't seem trainy enough that I think I wouldn't recommend it to like train game fans. Yeah, no, it's not it's not super heavy on the trains. That is kind of one of the main themes of it, but it's not it's not it, the main It, it doesn't seem like the mechanics fall in line with what people usually look for in a in a quote unquote train game. Yeah. Okay. I mean you can upgrade your train. So there are like some train cards and things and they'll have different power ups so you can kind of see which sure. which one you want. Um, but outside of that there's not a lot of other train action going on here. Uh, any other kind of broad genres like snow something, obviously <laughs> we've we've uh, nailed down for this. I'm sure somebody will, will okay. catch it in the uh, in chat. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll think of it. Sure. Um, um, it also doesn't seem like this is a very um, uh, direct conflict game again, like kind of a low spite level here. Yes, like I said, you're you're essentially working together to to complete the the rail line. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the end, you'll see who has the most victory points and see who's contributed the most, and that'll determine the winner. Um, so yeah, there's there's not a lot of spite. You're not really working against people too much. Um, it is worker placement, mm -hmm. and there's limited spaces on some of those places, sure. so you can kind that's, of that's relatively light spite. Yeah, yeah. So that that's about as that's about as mean as it gets, though. So. Our production staff are claiming that they researched it, and it is officially called Snow Something. Yes. But I have a feeling that they might be sabotaging us. Mm, so I think, I think we're gonna we're gonna put that one to the side sure. and just say maximum salt on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think he might be editing Wikipedia right now just to go. create it. Yeah. There's there's gonna be the Snow Something page here by the time we're done with this. All right, so I think the next one we're going to cover is the Color Monster. Color Monster. Oh, and this cool. Is, this sounds like a very intriguing game. Yes, it's very interesting. This is geared definitely more. Are we going to crack it? Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, this is definitely geared towards uh, smaller kids, so like four or five year olds, stuff like that. This is based off of the popular uh, kids book. Um, so if you read the kids book, you kind of know what you're getting into here. There was a kids book for the Color Monster. Do you have a nail? Because I oh, don't. Oh, sorry, I don't. I just, I'm wow. I'm terrible. We're the worst at this. Oh no. So so oh. ill prepared. Yeah. There we go. Good I mean, show. apparently I just clipped my nails. Yeah, no, I did too. And that was a bad choice. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so if you're familiar with the with the children's <laughs> book, <laughs> um, then you kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, you're going on an adventure with a color monster trying to help him figure out his emotions. So I have no, uh, no idea about this. Okay, book. cool. Do you want to uh, tell me about this children's book? Uh, do you have no idea about this children's <laughs> book? I do, I do have some basic knowledge on the uh, children's book, but I'm more familiar with the game. So we can just dive into that and kind of go with, uh, with the theme as we go through. Um, so in this game, it's kind of a matching game where you're going to have these little jars, um, and on the back side of the jars, you're going to uh, have a color, and you're going to want to match the color with the spaces that you land on in the board. Okay. Um, so each space on the board and each color is a, uh, a different emotion. So you'll go through, you have like happiness, you'll have fear, you have so anger. So these, these are the jars? And those are the jars, um, and they're actually pretty cool because they're like triple ply uh, cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually, once they're all set up and punched out, you can actually drop little tokens into the jars so you can actually see the little tokens in there. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, which is super clever design. Oh. Um, you these are the biggest meeples I have yes. ever seen. Well, again, these, this is for, for small children, four-year-olds, stuff like that. So these are designed in mind to be thrown around and you know covered in all sorts of grungy goop and stuff like that. Whatever. Well, thrown around, but I have a feeling they would not pass the bonsai test because if yeah. it's designed to be thrown around by a four-year-old, yeah. they probably checked to make sure that it could not be used as a very good weapon. Sure, yeah, yeah. Lots of, lots of round edges all that kind of stuff uh, yeah you're not gonna have to worry too much about getting hurt or anything like that on these um, but yeah pretty much everything you see here is is that's it so you'll have a dice where you'll roll you roll the dice it's gonna give you a number and that's gonna tell you how many spaces you can move okay uh, once you land on that space you'll try and there'll be several of these jars out here but you'll uh, try and figure out which jar has the green color in it okay once you once you'll you'll guess you'll look and then there'll also be a little green token on here um, like this little guy? Yeah, this little guy that's hiding over there. So you have a little green token on, on there. Uh, and when you get to that point and you find the little jar that has a green on it, you'll pick up the token and you'll want to put it in the jar. Before you can do that though, this is where this game does something really important. You actually have to talk about that emotion. Um, so this jar right here is actually a mixed emotion. Okay. This is bad. So if you actually uh, uncover too many of those, you'll pretty much lose and you'll have to reset the game. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to find the correct correct jars. Uh, it is cooperative, so you'll be working together. So this would be maybe the green jar? Yes. So so yeah, you'll have, you can see all the different little colors and jars there. Um, 
once you flip the uh, mixed emotion jars over, they kind of stay out. So you don't want to have too many of them. The way you can get rid of them is if you roll the little girl. So the little girls want to come over to the monster and say, it's okay, it's nice, mm -hmm. and try to calm down, and then you'll be able to flip that over and kind of continue the game. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so you'll get your token, you'll say, you know, about happiness or calm, you'll, you'll talk about it and be like, okay, well, what makes sure. you feel calm? And so, th so this is less a like, competitive point scoring game. Yeah. And it's more uh, an exercise in kind of traveling around the board and getting the players to talk about how they feel about things. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely more about uh, having the, the players uh, talk about how they feel about certain things. So like I said, to put the little thing in, uh, to put the token in the jar, you have to talk about that emotion. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really good way to start a dialogue with your kids about uh, you know, how they feel about certain things and it helps you be honest with them because when you land on that, you're gonna have to talk about those emotions. Um, uh, are the different colors automatically tied to certain emotions? Yes. Or is it a question of like, how does this section make you feel? Well, I mean, it kind of depends. Uh, and that's kind of the, the nice thing about it is you have like fear. Well, I mean, fear is very, you know, broad mm -hmm. term. So you can be like, well, what, what makes you afraid? And they can talk about something that may be very tangible or, you know, com something completely ridiculous or something. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of it is you can kind of just start that discussion and that can help you get into more important, you know, maybe difficult discussions, things that you might have a hard time as a parent trying to like initiate those kind of kind of talks with your with your kids. Sure. Um, and this is a great way to kind of take advantage of that and be able to do that in a really easy, fun way and they're kind of distracted with the game. So it doesn't feel like you're having like a sit down talk, you're actually sure. doing something fun. So I don't, I don't think that there's, this doesn't really remind me of any other particular game. Yeah, this is, this uh, well, is definitely I mean, those a Those are big enough, I don't know. If yeah. yeah, those um, are definitely, this, it's a little different, for sure. Um, it's, it's very simple. Like I said, it's intended for, you know, small children, like three, mm -hmm. four, five-year-olds. So, um, so recommended for parents with small children. Yep. Um, uh, anybody else that you would recommend this game for? Is this really just for kids or um, just for anybody who maybe has a little trouble kind of tackling and, and dealing with their emotions? I think I think that could very well be used as a really good tool for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not necessarily limited to children. Um, it's obviously intended for children and like they're I think probably gonna get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely. There's no reason why you couldn't play this as an adult with a bunch of adults hanging out and just kind of talking about your emotions. Like that's, if that's what you wanna do with your play group, this is a really good way to do it. Great. Uh, it's definitely a very kind of different experience. Um, very interested to see how that's received and how mm -hmm. effective people find that to be with their kids. Apparently, it's doing well. So they've, they, I know they've been, they've been moving a ton of copies of it. It's been really popular. I can great. see this being played in schools, like having schools mm -hmm. pick yep. this up. This yep. is, this is going to be a great tool for for parents and all those kind of things. Awesome. So I think we have one game left, yep. and that is Las Vegas Royale. Yes. So what can you tell me about this? Las Vegas Royale is kind of combination of uh, Las Vegas that came out in uh, 2012 and then the expansion that came out a couple years later, I want to say 2014. Um, this is kind of both of those together in one package. Um, it's, it's a dice rolling game, so each mm -hmm. player will have a, a set color of dice. You'll roll the dice, you'll uh, have six different casinos that you can uh, put your dice in. Once you roll, you'll pick a value, you'll say five, and all the fives you have will go to the casino that's labeled number five. Um, at the end, after everyone has, has all their dice placed on the table, you'll see who has a majority at each casino, mm -hmm. and then you'll get payout cards for that. So oh, it'll great. be like, either like a $100,000 card and a $50,000 to $1, card, and if you have the majority, then you'll get the higher value. Uh, and then you just basically do that for three rounds, and, and you'll figure out who has the most money and who owns Vegas. Okay, so it sounds pretty quick. Yep. Uh, and it's basically like a dice rolling placement territory control-esque kind of thing. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the thing with uh, Royal, it's gonna have all the expansion stuff, so some of these casinos, you'll have a bunch of different tiles that you can add that'll add like power-ups and different things that you can do, and there's, like I said, a, a ton of different options, so you'll be able to mix and match mm -hmm. them. And yeah, because I different. noticed that this is, this is not a new game. No. This is a new package of a, a game that came out a while ago, mm -hmm. plus some expansions, and yep. it sounded like it incorporated some of the elements of the expansions, but not all of them. Yeah, so it's it's pretty yeah it's pretty much just like a, a like a new edition basically. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, okay. it's, it's basically a new and improved version that has like all the old good stuff that everyone knows and loves, 
but it's all together in one big package. Okay. So well, so the dice rolling in Vegas mm -hmm. tend to be a, 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 like a mechanic and a theme that go pretty well together. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, how would you compare this to say Lords of Vegas or some of the other mm -hmm. like um, dice heavy Vegas territory control games? I would say this one's really simple. Okay. Um, there's not a lot to it. Um, once you get it going, you're pretty much just taking turns, just rolling dice, putting it in there, and then once everyone's done, you just count it up. Okay. Does it sound like there's a ton of player interaction then, other than not really. rolling better than them and, and sticking all your stuff where pretty they go? Pretty much, yeah. It's, it's more about strategy, less about interacting with players. Now, with some of the power-ups that this game offers, like you'll be able to like move and manipulate dice into other things. So like let's say you rolled a bunch of fours, and you're like, well, I want to What I hear you saying is there's a little bit of spite here. A little bit. There's okay. a little bit. Um, so, so you can definitely. Kind You're giving of, me something to work with this week. Yeah, you can you can screw over people a little bit in this game, but not not too bad. Okay. Uh, so you know, I mentioned uh, Lords of Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, any other uh, games that you would kind of recommend that people, if they're liking, they should check this one out, either because of the theme or are there other dice rolling games that you feel are kind of similar to this? Um, I don't. I mean, it's not really similar, but uh, Sagrada. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one's really good. I just love that game. Um, <laughs> you just want an excuse to mention yeah. Sagrada. Yeah, of course. Got it. Okay, that seems reasonable. Um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, this is great. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's much simpler than a lot of the other kind of Vegas-themed games. So okay. if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, a little bit quicker. How long is it supposed to, this is 45, 60 minutes overall? Yeah. So it, I mean, from your description, that seems longer than I would have expected. Yeah, uh, but it's one of those things where, like, I feel like if you really know what you're doing and everybody knows the rules, you can burn through it pretty okay. quickly. And But it, you're also going to be playing... Like multiple rounds. Yes. So okay. you'll play three rounds, uh, and and you'll you won't you won't use all your dice at once. So when you do your roll, you'll pick one value out of it, and you'll only be able to move those. You'll uh, take okay. the rest of your dice and Got then it goes to the next person. Okay. So it, depending on how long that takes, that's kind of where it'll be sure. like maybe longer, a little bit shorter of a game. Okay. Great. Uh, I believe that is it. Uh, anything that you want to say about any of the the games that we brought this week? Uh, I mean, I think I think all of them are really cool. Uh, I know I'm definitely going to be picking up Jurassic Park because I think uh, having a Rick Sanchez and Raptor team for Funkoverse is going to be way too fun. Um, and Color Monster, of course, I think that's that's a fabulous game. Again, if you have small children, that's going to be a really good tool for you to be able to kind of have some more serious discussions with them. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, all, all these are great. I mean, Guerrilla Marketing, that sounds like probably one of the more fun party games I've heard of recently. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You clearly weren't listening to our anchor man time on uh, uh, table takes yeah uh, great anything that you else that you want to say about yourself or about mock sporting house before we wrap up for this week uh, I mean not not a ton but I would say like if you are interested in games and you're in the Seattle area or Bellevue or basically the Washington area uh, yeah, definitely check us out uh, we have tons of great games you can come in hang out with your friends we have all food foods and snacks and beer and all that good stuff uh, private rooms all sorts of events and charities that we do as well um, so if you check our events page uh, we should be able to do mm -hmm. a lot of cool things and soon down in Portland yes yeah very soon in Portland and hopefully after that maybe in your neighborhood well not your neighborhood because we're say, already like, in your neighborhood yeah, but we've, we've got that but, covered but your neighborhood unless you want to just open up a shop around the corner <laughs> yeah, from me <laughs> that would be convenient we'll see how sustainable that yeah, is yeah well I don't know maybe uh, all right well thank you for coming out yeah, no uh, thank you for joining us this week sure. hopefully we'll see more of you in the future yeah that'd be good. Uh, thanks to mox for sending you out mm -hmm. uh, thanks to everybody for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed table takes a new release rundown today uh, if you stick around later this evening at 6 p.m we will have uh, Rodney Thompson my friend coming in to run his game spectaculars which is a superhero RPG that's very meta. Uh, there's a lot of uh, elements of like self-awareness of how comic books are kind of structured and stuff like that. But it's also a very simple superhero game. So you should join us to check that out. Uh, I think we'll make some superheroes come up with some sort of cosmic force for them to fight against and then see what adventures happen. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to play Jubilee or something. Still close to Wolverine, but maybe a little uh, different. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Mondays, we normally have the Brothers Murph play in board games, but they are traveling in Europe, so they won't be able to do this Monday. They will be on Wednesday um, teaching people how to paint miniatures, so it'll be Wednesday with the Brothers Murph. And then Friday at 4 p.m., I'm sorry, uh, the Brothers Murph start at 9 a.m. Pacific. Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, the um, Peter Atkinson will be interviewing somebody on Fireside, and this season they're covering the history of Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition, kind of when he was involved in the, the process. 
uh, Friday or Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. We have Westgate Irregulars, which is a group of local authors who come together to play D&D. And then on Fridays, we have table takes at 11 a.m. And then we have new release rundown at about 12.30. So thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. Remember to, so, to follow, subscribe. We have uh, old episodes that you have missed on YouTube. The Fireside comes out um, every Friday and Monday as a podcast. So we're kind of going everywhere that you might want to be. Um, so if you have ideas for other shows or anything like that, let us know and check our stuff out. Thank you very much. See you soon.